Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Thursday, September 12th, 2024. And today is National School Picture Day. You know, I never did like that day. You know, you always were were so careful of how you dressed because, you know, that was this school picture was your statement for the year. And you wanted to make sure you didn't get caught with some kind of goofy facial expression or having the wrong shirt on or whatever. And I just hated that day. I never liked that day. But something to really celebrate is also National Chocolate Milkshake Day. Now, I can get behind that because I like a good chocolate milkshake. If you're reading along in the scriptures with us, we're reading Nehemiah chapter 8 today and Proverbs chapter 12. Um, So, of course, I encourage you to to read those chapters sometime today. And our study today is going to be taken from Titus chapter number 2. And I'm going to read for you verses 11 through 15. Scripture says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. The title of the message today is, It is for us all. And we're, Paul's, Paul's given, given Titus here, some important things to make sure that he reiterates to people to make sure that he he teaches people and it's it's the basically the basics of faith but even if even though it is the basics of faith it's important to go back and revisit those from time to time to make sure that our faith is in the right things uh, verse number 11 tells us that Jesus has appeared to everybody, to all men. He says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Of course, he's referring to Jesus. Uh, it's important to note, Jesus is the Messiah, the Messiah that the that Israel was waiting for and the Messiah that the early church missed or the early people missed. And um, But he says here, The grace of God that bring us salvation has appeared. Jesus has appeared. Verses 12 and 13 tells us what Jesus had taught us. He says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Some of the things he taught us is that denying ungodliness and worldliness. You know, those are things that many of us struggle with on a regular basis we are we live in this world we we you know are influenced by this world and we need to get away from that stuff we need to get away from worldliness and we need to start being more more godly get into godliness and holiness and in first john chapter number two these are very familiar verses especially if you listen to this podcast on a regular basis uh, because we bring these verses up quite often john says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of god abide us forever Jesus told us and taught us to deny he says here to 
that we need to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. And John here is reiterating that, and he's 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 making it more practical for us. He's saying, love not the world, the things that are in the world. You know, that that's the thing that, like I said, many of us struggle with. And John says we shouldn't do that stuff. Why? Because if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why should we not love the world? After all, the world is God's creation. Well, you see, the world he's talking about here is the world of sin. It's worldliness. It's the world of sin. It's the world of, of evil that he's telling us not to love. You know, I, I like going to the Great Smoky Mountains. I love the mountains. I like when I'm driving to work. Sometimes I get up and I can, on a road there, and I can see the mountains in the distance. I love to look at them. But you know, I don't love those mountains more than I love God. You see, that's the problem. So many of us like the things of this world, like going to the beach, like going to the mountains, like going to the to the prairie, uh, like taking cruises like I do, like going to Disney World. But we got to make sure that those things don't, we don't start loving those things more than we love God. Why, again, should we not love those things? He says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of is of the world. You see, these things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, that's not the things of God. Those are the things that's evilness. Those are the things that cause us to st stumble and fall away from God. Those are the things that cause us problem in our lives. Then in verse 17, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever one day this world as we know it is going to be wiped away and we're going to get a new heaven and a new earth and heaven will be on earth you know that's all in revelation that's talking about the end times that's after the rapture that's after the the tribulation and all that other stuff one day all that's going to be gone and he says he that doeth the will of god abideth forever he says we need to deny ungodliness we need to deny worldly worldly lusts then he said we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world soberly making sure that we're not under the influence of anything you know that's one of the things that you know, it seems is getting more popular, especially here in America, is, is the consumption of alcohol and and alcohols in in dishes in restaurants now, and it's it's getting into everything. And if you get too much of that in there, that means you become drunk. You become subject to that alcohol. You're under the control of that alcohol. We need to make sure we don't do that. We need to live soberly. We need to live righteously. Righteously means we're living according to biblical principles. It means we're, we're living on the right side of, of the tracks, if you will. Maybe that ain't the right way to put it. But we're, we're living righteously and godly. Living according to the Bible in this present world. In his prayer that Jesus was praying right before his his arrest and death and, and crucifixion as he was praying for his disciples in John chapter 17 and verse 15 he says I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou but that thou should keepest them from the evil you know it would be so much easier so much better for us and trying to live for God trying to live for Jesus that at that moment of salvation that God would take us home to be with him in heaven but then we'd have no witnesses left here on earth that's why we're still here is to be his witnesses that's what he said in uh, 
and in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 1 and Jesus here in his prayer is praying and saying don't take them out of the world but that you should keep them from evil from the evil keep us from the evil that is so relevant or that is so rampant in our world and while we're denying ungodliness and, and worldly lusts and while we're trying to live soberly righteously and godly we also need to look for something verse 13 says looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ we need to keep looking for that second coming of Jesus we need to keep looking for that and I don't know maybe it's just me I'm seeing a lot of it but if you spend any time any time looking at Facebook reels you see a lot of videos anymore that there seems to be an angel in the sky or even someone in the shape of the Son of Man and of course I know that that's all CGI computer generated images in there but one day that's not going to be a computer image it's going to be Jesus himself coming back and we need to make sure we keep looking for that Jesus has appeared to everybody he taught us things and what did Jesus do for us this is what we read in verse number 14 talking about Jesus now who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works he gave himself for us he gave himself on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins so that he might redeem us so he might might free us from all iniquity from all sin and then he's going to purify unto himself a peculiar people that's us I'm fine with being called a peculiar people why does Paul refer to it that way because we should be different than what this world has to offer we should be different than what everybody can see you know I remember reading a story an illustration I was probably preparing to preach somewhere and I, I read a illustration and it talked about this guy who went into church because uh, he wanted to to get into the church he, he felt drawn to go to the church so he went into church and while he was there in the middle of the sermon his telephone went off his cell phone started ringing and people looked at him with these glaring evil looks at him and and he was so embarrassed that he got up and left and vowed never to return and the following Sunday he decided well you know I'm not going to go to church anymore because these people are are too rigid so he ended up going and spending the day in a bar watching football and his phone went off and and everybody quieted down so he can hear his what the conversation was you know we, we need to be different that man found acceptance in the bar when he should have found acceptance in the church <laughs> but anyway he's purifying himself a peculiar people and these peculiar people will be zealous of good works we're gonna we're gonna want to do the good works that God has called us to do what do we need to do today what do we need to do with this well number one we need to do those good works but then in verse 15 Paul tells Titus here these things speak and exhort and rebuke all right these things speak speak about Jesus speak about how we're supposed to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts speak how we're supposed to be sober speak and, and exhort how we we should be living godly lives exhort simply means to command we need to speak we need to command and we need to rebuke with all authority then he says let no man despise thee titus was just like timothy a young man and in in second timothy chapter four and verse number two that's not the verse I wanted but that one anyway says preach the word be instant in season and out of season 
reprove, rebuke, and exhort with with all long suffering and doctrine. But the verse I wanted, there's another verse, and it's either first or second Timothy, where he says, Don't let someone look down on you because of your age. And and we need to make sure we don't let people look down on us because we are Christians, because we are trying to be different and trying to live lives according to to the Bible, according to God's standards. Remember, all this, all this is for all of us. And we need to be proclaiming that message, the message of Jesus as the Messiah coming to pay the penalty for our sins so that we can live for him. Is that the message you're telling other people? Or are you just joining in whatever conversation is at the water cooler that day? Friends, time's running out. We need to share the gospel. We need to tell people. You know, if you live in an area that gets snow falling and, you know, you warn people, hey, it's going to snow, make sure you got food and stuff. But we need to make sure we're warning people that the end times are coming. Go and share the gospel with whoever God gives you the opportunity to share it with. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you. And then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Hi, looking for a new religion? Yeah, I'm looking for something that adds more meaning to my life. Well, you've come to the right place. Are you looking for a guru to follow or a philosophy? Actually, I'm looking for a religion that fulfills the, uh, you know, the, the spiritual side of me. This one is very popular with the Hollywood set. Really? And you know what authorities they are on religion. No. Ah. I see you are the discerning type. Mm-hmm. Well, here's a god that's worthy of your worship. Wow, that's that's nice. Uh, so are you allowed to eat meat? Uh, no. Oh. Ah, I know exactly what you're looking for. How's this one? <gasps> that's exactly what I'm looking for. That's what I said. This is a god I can trust. This god always has my best in mind. Of course he does. I'd feel comfortable worshiping this god. I bet he'd even die for me. Mm, don't think so. No, that doesn't make sense, does it? I'll take it. That'll be $30 for the frame and $10 for the mirror. Who do you worship? Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com. Thank you.